Greetings! My name's Joe Bob, and I am very peeved. Welcome to Mask of the Rose. Another of the, uh, sort of spin-off games from Fallen London, like Sunless Sea, and the game that will not be named. But you, can, you can see it in the bottom right corner, so that kind of beats the point, but whatever. <laughs> this one, it's sort of a... it's... It's a different sort of style of game, as usual. It sort of fits the style of the... the fitting style. It's sort of a uh, visual novel, uh, murder mystery, dating sim kind of thing. Because... Uh, uh, why dating sim? Because we live in the timeline where the Batfuckers won. And no, I will not elaborate on that. Let's start playing. Your first foray into the Master of the Rose is unlikely to end as happily as you might hope. Never mind. Savor your successes. Delight in your disasters. Try again. Wiser in the ways of the Nea. The city is- Oh, shit. Thick with secrets, but they can't hide from you. Could've- <laughs> In February 1862, with no warning at all, London fell through the surface of the earth. Yeah. Yeah, this is taking place in the er very, very early days of Fallen London. This was meant to be a year of progress and industry. The Great Exposition. Trams. A new sewer system. Instead, we find ourselves dwelling in a cave. It's October now. The fires have been put out. The bodies have been buried. But the future remains unimaginable. The time before, impossibly distant. Who were you? Let's see, a dock worker's child. My father worked the docks, unloading ships. My uncle was a sailor. We were on the right side of the law, but the same couldn't always be said for our friends. Docks are allied with the working class and with criminals? <laughs> That's me! <laughs> Uh, child of the gentry. My family had an estate on the surface. My father was a magistrate. All that is unreachable now, of course. I had the bad fortune to be in London during the fall, and now there is no going back. But I do have a few connections here. The landed gentry, gentry hobnob in high society and with a constabulary. A tailor. My family kept a tailoring shop with aspirations. We dressed our customers better than we dressed ourselves. Shopkeepers have contacts with society, but their own origins are more humble. They may also have some contacts among the artistically inclined. A uh, housebreaker's child? Father was a housebreaker. His father was a highwayman. We came into the world, no longer doing our crimes on horseback. And then my father was arrested. Uh, you must complete the game in order to unlock this background. Aw, oh, that's lame. Undertaker. Aw, oh, they're all oh, they're fucking locked off. Lame. And why is... <laughs> and why is there no option to have your... To be a fucking... Or, uh... You know, urchin with no family. Oh, oh, my family, my family. What about those of us who don't have a family? Ding that. Ugh. I guess this one doesn't include any mention of the family. But unfortunately, I can't un uh, play it. Ah, this is off to a bad start. Okay. Hmm. It's a dock worker's child. Why not? Down here, your name is whatever you say it is. Often, there's no one left to remember who you used to be. Some people hold tight to the names they carried before. Some reinvent themselves completely. <laughs> Captain. Captain Kiddo! <laughs> what a name! Comrade Black. Oh, it's sir, madame. Attendant, reverend, sister, brother, secretary. I wish I could see all of them at once. It's kind of an awkward way to sort, sort through them. Most difficult choice of the entire game. 
So yeah, this game just really feels like a natural sort of thing for me to make videos on. Partly because, well, I've already been playing, I already played a lot of Sunless Sea on this channel, and I play a lot of Fallen London in, in my spare time. And also, very importantly, because this game is actually, you know, recent and popular. Whereas most of the games that I've been playing have been, at best, one of those things. <laughs> so that'll it'll certainly help me in the YouTube algorithm game. <laughs> you know what? Let's just go with the default, Captain Kiddo. It sounds really dumb, and that suits me. <laughs> That's me, Kiddo to my friends, Captain to strangers. Uh, so that's how I was addressed, even before London fell. Why not? Uh, not that one. That one looks stupid. Uh... All these look too posh, but alright. Let's go with this one, why not? In the Naath, a true ally means everything. When I find people to be close to, I am open to... Friendship, but no romantic emotions or physical intimacy. Friendship and physical intimacy, and no romantic relationship. Blah, 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 Whatever comes my way. I'll be looking for both romantic feelings and a physical connection. Well, I wouldn't say looking for, but... Friendship and matchmaking are possible too, of course. <laughs> I'm happy with this. Not really, but it'll do. Right now, I'm meant to be helping with the census, finding out who still lives in my neighborhood. The first census results are due tomorrow. If I turn them in, I get paid. The first money to come my way in nearly two months. I know that feeling. If I don't, I'm going to disappoint Grizz badly. She knew I was in trouble, so she went out of her way to help me find work with her own employers. She even gave me a badge to show me my show my affiliation. <laughs> show me my affiliation. No. The badge of the Ministry of Accounting and Recounting. The front of the badge looks almost like a constable's badge, with a lion and unicorn blazoned on it. The back of the badge has some kind of symbol I don't recognize. Hot to the touch. I keep, I keep it with the clothes I have before from before the fall, and a few odd items I found more recently. Let's see. Not a very sophisticated look at all. Uh, look, not much of a look at all, indeed. Let's see. Atlas, going bareheaded is it? Actually... Face, I got. What? What am I a snuffer? Fake but vibrant corsage. The most obvious thing about this flower is that it is extremely fake. Forever going out on the town, boasting and gallivanting. Badge of the Ministry of Accounting and Recounting. Yeah. Torso. Torso boy. Uh, sailor's top. It brings all the merits of sailors. Contempt for landlubbers and toughs. Solidarity with one's own. And a rich vocabulary of insult and mockery. My kind of top. I look like I belong on the docks, and like I might speak my mind too much. No such thing. That suggests I have more power than one would expect. Ah, uh, what voice do you wear? Ah, I thought you were up here. She glances at the badge I'm wearing. I suppose I should be glad you're thinking about the census, even if you didn't get around to leaving the house. I, I react to that the way I react to many things these days. Can I save in this game? I'm not certain. It doesn't seem like it. Which is concerning. <laughs> I turn it into a joke. Indeed. I thought I'd wait for a change in the weather. A lovely snow, perhaps. There's no sunshine down here. There are no yellow pea soup fogs. There's no rain, except occasionally a fine mist. Londoners lost half our topics of conversation when we fell. 
Come tomorrow evening, we need to have at least a few census forms filled out. Or I'm going to be the one explaining to Mr. Pages. And if that happens, I'm not going to help you with your employment prospects again. Grizz works for the Ministry of Accounting and Recounting. It seems to agree with her. She wears trousers to work, and comes home at all hours. It's very important to her, being taken seriously by these employers. The next thing I do is characteristic two. Rely on dark humor. <laughs> Indeed. Did your employer say whether I should also interview the squid-faced men? Or are they not included in the census? I, I believe they were invented by the newspapers. But if you happen to meet it with any, by all means record their name. What about the talking crows? Consider yourself at liberty to include any creature capable of telling you its name or occupation. What do you think of the question? Uh, that, uh, that? You call that dark humor? That was barely gray! <laughs> that was an embarrassment. They're, uh, they're written in the most peculiar spiked handwriting. And there are punctures in the paper in random spots. Let's see. Ask her, uh, ask her what put these holes in the paper. Why does this page look like this? Do your employers know how to, uh, how to use a pen? Of course. Here, try the questions on me. That wasn't even a deflection, that was just a flat refusal to answer. Say you've just knocked on the door, and I have come to answer it. Yes? What do you want? Introduce myself as an agent of the Ministry, showing my badge. Good evening. On behalf of the Ministry of Accounting and Recounting, I have a few questions. Oh, how lovely. I am so grateful these Ministries are looking after us. <laughs> Flirtatiously riff on how excellent the Ministry is. I agree. Everyone you meet there is so good looking. Clever, too. Yes, yes, I know what your compliments are worth when you're trying to get out of trouble. <laughs> Jokingly speculate? <laughs> you said the masters are always hooded and they never see their faces. Maybe they have faces like angels and they just don't want us being frightened off. I've wondered. They're magnetic in a way. How many people live in this establishmentation? Is that a word? Establishmentation? My uh, superiors are enthusiast uh, enthusiastic embellishers of the language. That fucking Mr. Pages. He's the worst combination of, pre of pretentious and also careless. He likes to expoundificate on things that he doesn't Ah, yeah, whatever. If you like, you can uh, translate into questions that are more likely to be understood. Right. How many people live in this establishment? Four. The landlady, Miss Horatio, Miss Horatia Chapman, a young man named Archibald Ride, myself, and a fourth character. Very disreputable. Joke that she's not counting the vermin. <laughs> you forget. Our basement has more rats than Noah's Ark. More than two, you mean? At the end of its voyage, I should have said. Sometimes I'm in the mood to keep chatting, and sometimes I want to get to the point. Linger over the census in order to keep chatting with Grizz. Is anyone in the establishment... Enamorificated or impassionated. What does this even mean? They're asking if anyone here is in love. Just ask that. Is anyone here in love? No. <laughs> uh. 
she use her? Ask whether she's sure about herself. Ask whether she's sure about her. Let's tease her. If you wanted to discuss our romantic inclinations, Grizz, there are easier ways. You didn't have to ask me to survey all our neighbors on the topic. No? At this moment, a second visitor walks in. Archie is a medical student. Oh no, I'm go- uh, The world is fading out! I'm gonna faint! Good thing he's a medical student here. <laughs> he hadn't finished his training before the fall, but he has plenty of work now. Right after the fall, it was broken bones and cuts. Lately, there are fewer wounds and more diseases. Aye. Aye. Uh... What kind of voice to give him? The eye makes, it makes you think of giving him a Scottish accent. I don't know about that though. Hey, I wondered where you were. Uh. Yes, that's why Archie is here. Archie? Something wrong downstairs? Has there been a new disaster? Not the kind you're thinking of. Out I went this morning to visit a patient. Ah, yeah. To visit a patient. And what do I find pasted up on the wall? Yeah, I'm getting a sense for his accent now. Filled up a broadsheet. There's a new decree from the Ministry of Cartography and Geography that all maps and atlases are to be surrendered or put on the fire. It's your folk making these rules, Grizz. Take <laughs> Archie's side and demand to know what is going on. N although I do already myself already know what's going on. It's a method of controlling the populace. Because he who controls the past can, uh, controls the present. And all that stuff. Uh, and also to disguise alterations. Yes, what is happening, Grizz? What's this about? Are you asking, will you be asking your Mr. Pages about these maps? One must respect the law. None of us knows what is safe down, in the, down here in the net. Respect must be earned. There is. And the pa masters have, uh, uh, have done nothing of the sort. Not now, and certainly not later. They've done the, quite the opposite, in fact. Most likely there are reasons you can't imagine. That's a sorry excuse. Oh, sure. We were, uh, were doing this all this crap. We're asserting all this crap. Why? And we, and we can't tell you what it is because you wouldn't, um, couldn't possibly imagine what it was or some bullshit. Fuck off. It's trivially easy to imagine why this is the case. Kiddo, please do collect at least a few census forms by tomorrow from whatever Londoners you're able to find. At the end of the day, I'll find you, and we can take them to Mr. Pages together. As I said, failed since this form, Pages like, wow, that'd be a bit of a... Anyways. You know what I miss the most? Back home, my sister's hair turned color when it rained. Blonde or wet plastered brown. Like a mad hen, she looked. How are you holding up? Worse than Grizz, I wanna lie. Seems there's no road out of here. Food from the masters is a wee reprieve, but when you think of all else that might kill us below, scurvy and the like. The great hulk and rock fell on the house in Southwark, did the roof in, and near, ki near to kill the whole household. But I best be quiet. I'd like to give you nightmares too, and I'm fair out of laudanum to help with the sleep. Yeah. This was before. Uh, this was likely before the Cumian Canal got set up, so there was no real route to the surface. That I will. And subject to the census. Grizz has me gathering census pages for the ministry. Hi, Grizz told me it was some such thing. Shows. Shows some doubt. Are you truly free of romantic commitments? Oh, that's not the kind of doubt that I was thinking from the, before the fall. You've never befriended an especially promising patient. 
You've never befriended an especially promising patient? You must have had your sh share of opportunities. Down here? There's no one. What about before Judgment Day? There was a lass back home. And what did me mother but do but promise me to her? Suggest you might prefer a more local alternative. <laughs> that sounds a long way to go to be finding a bride. Might be there's someone better suited here in London. Eh, well, I never had much nerve for courting. Might be no one here would take a fancy to me anyhow. The question is stirred recollections. He's not considered for a time. Oh? What did I just get? Is it bad to say I'm not... Uh, not uh, I've not much thought of her since? She has very even teeth. What does that even mean? Uh, oh, a census page. <laughs> what does that even mean? My mother said overlapping teeth in a woman meant defiance, and gaps meant to mean a light skirt. A light skirt? Is that a term for slut? It sounds like it. A uh, woman of lax behavior, a prostitute. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Joke a little at her expense. And this girl has the dentition of a nun? <laughs> Aye, and a smooth round scalp like a billiard ball to frustrate any phrenologists that might be going by. <laughs> Always a, a good time frustrating phrenologists. I should know, it's one of my favorite pastimes. You're thinking I'm well out of it, but there was no harm in her. And I'd take a good dull, a dull good wife if she came with a wee plot of land in an open sky, if you know what I mean. <laughs> sure. Flirt with Archie. Always up for a good flirt. My next comment is a bit war. He gives me a funny and lopsided look, like it's just occurred to him that something could ever go well in his life. Yeah, I know that feeling. If I met the like of you in Scotland, I might never have come to London. Laugh at Arch. Hmm. Let's see. Uh. Side to court Archie. That seems a bit, uh, jumping the gun. En encourage him. Uh. So you're wishing you met a copy of me instead of myself? I'm devastated. Ugh. Oh. You take the words away from me and wrestle them to mean something else. You know well enough what I'm saying. And then he buggers off, I guess. That's the end of the conversation, I suppose. Keep track of everything in my journal. The conversations I've had, the plans I've made. That's probably a sign of OCD. How I'm feeling about the other people. View the day in my journal. Alright. 259 days since the fall. Captain Kiddo. <laughs> Swore to never consume another bite of mushroom. Well, this character isn't much like me then. Uh, look, antifungal fast because too hungry. <laughs> okay. Mum has a nice girl for him back home. Romantic interest. Passionate romance. I'm, I've got a romantic interest in romance. That's, that makes sense, but alright. Alright. Short day. 13 days remain in the season of confessions. Ooh la la. The newspapers aren't what they used to be, but someone is still printing broadsheets these days. Yes, sadly there are no truly reliable newspapers yet. It'll be it'll be decades before the uh, before my daily It'll be decades before the Daily Courant is <laughs> revived under my running. <laughs> so there aren't any truly trustworthy newspapers yet. 
Archie bought one, and the headlines read, Missing baby found in vast basement spiderweb. Masters urge calm. Yeah. Well, that seems plausible. Relive the fall of London. This will not cause time to pass. What? What do you mean, relive the fall of London? I'm always reliving London's last night on the surface. Oh shit. Yeah. It's easy for people to forget just how... horrific, monstrous the bazaar is. They don't get f confronted with imagery like this. It's easy to just forget about its crimes. I try to put it out of my head, but it's still there. The dimming of the sun at three in the afternoon. The sky turning the color of rust. The horrible bang and the cloud of dust from the direction of Westminster. The tolling of the bell. The horseman who rode down the street, liveried in the garb of the palace, shouting, In Her Majesty's name, go indoors. And then the sky was full of bats. More bats than I thought could exist in the world. Wheeling, shrieking, defecating. People went indoors then, if they'd ignored the criers. Those who had no house crowded into the churches and under the bridges. Even now I don't understand. How Her Majesty knew to send criers. The palace has, had, has been shuttered since that day. The royal family do not emerge. Surely if they had known this was coming, they would have departed R London. Surely. It was only the city that fell. The rest of England, we assume, remains above. Curious, is it not? Almost as if it was their own damn plan. Almost as if they were responsible for it. Almost as if they wanted this to happen. I reckon it's a tornado. I heard a somewhat similar in the Welsh hills back to 1760. May light in the sky and a noise like a thunderclap. That's no tornado, love. It's a plague of Egypt. I intervened before they annoyed one another. <laughs> The newspapers will tell us in the morning what it was. Leastwise, it'll make a good story if the lead is home. But Glasgow will be envious of our, of, of our London fashions. Then the ground shook again. I believe we can blame Mr. Basilgate's excavations, digging about under London, causing a seismic disturbance. And what did he find? What did he find down there? But a cave of three million bats. That's what you reckon? There were stranger things beneath London. You have no idea. That was the beginning of it. We were down there for hours and hours. The sky darkened, and it didn't return to normal. Once, around midnight, Riz went upstairs and opened the door to the street, but she came right back down again. She said the cobbles were galloping about. It wasn't safe to walk outside. After that first bit, the memories collide and get confused. I have trouble keeping track of which came first and which came later, and whether I'm imagining something. I spent a lot of days like this, thinking back, trying to piece together the bits of the puzzle. As if I could realize something that would make sense of it all. Sense is not something that can truly be. Well, never mind. Well, let's go outside, shall we? Boarding house, Wall Street. I hate this font. That's coming from someone who regularly uses Eldritch Nouveau. So, yeah. Let's see. Uh, boarding house. Take the census with Hor Horatia. Work on my relationship with Grizz. Take the sentence with Grizz. Um, take the sentence with Harjeet. Who the fuck is Harjeet? 
Uh, take the sunsets with Grizz, sure. It's worth it to be mindful of how others will perceive me. What role I play, what I can and cannot say, is constrained by my clothes. Bloody fascist. This was true before the fall, but it's even truer now. Names, identities, and relationships have all become so unsteady and unreliable. They've always been, but now people have realized it. Grizz always likes the sight of the badge. I should change. <laughs> she likes the sight of the badge that I have. So I should change. <laughs> uh, I'm satisfied with this. <laughs> I thought you might still be in the house. Mr. Pages is not an early riser. In fact, he was very put out when I came to the ministry in the morning. The badge makes clear that I'm here for business, not for conversation. I thought I might finish your census form. Mr. Pages already knows all about me, but I suppose it is good practice. Oh, I'm taking you. I thought you were, I was saying like I was going with her to take the census. Uh. Use the question as a chance to flirt. <laughs> I'm hoping you don't have a past fiancé looking in the wings. I was engaged once. The gentleman wanted a gracious hostess and a mother to his heirs. A very eligible alliance, according to my parents. <laughs> ah, sympathize. Always a good choice. Sorry to hear it. I have no regrets. I found my way to the ministry. I would not have come to the attention of Mr. Pages if I were still addressing invitations in my mother's sitting room. Asked why she ever agreed to the engagement. Why did you accept the proposal in the first place, then? I could have sent him on a political life. She looks as though she might say more, but she thinks better of it. There was a short silence. Why not? It's, it's always a good time for flirting. There's some connection between us. A natural understanding, I think. She gives me a look that she must have learned for summoning suitors across a crowded ballroom. Silence falls. If you want company, you know, you're always uh, welcome to pay a call. If we can use the term. Oh my! Miss Grizz, <laughs> you're trying to seduce me. Morning calls in our own parlor. It's not quite clear who should leave the card with whom. All the same, I welcome companionship. Romantic direction, seductive direction. Left of a friend Grizz. Seductive direction. I would like that. I never mind seeing more of you. I was used to a townhouse full of family and servants before I came here and guests to dinner most nights of the week. The season would be starting now, or hereabout. Of course, no one now can come up from their estates. Uh, joke about social calls on people in one's own house. Now which of us will pour the tea for the other? Considering that the only tea we've had in the house for weeks has a decided odor of mold, I believe I will forego that dubious pleasure. We'll have to find some other suitable entertainment. What a tragedy. London without... T uh, a London social call without tea. Horrifying. It's a good thing that people eventually discovered ways of acquiring tea down here. I'd hate to think of what they'd have to do with mushrooms to create something up approximating it if they hadn't. Judging by the clock, I can afford one more errand today before supper. Wow. <laughs> Apparently that, uh, that thing took hours or something. Alright, take the census, census with Harjit. I assume I'm pronouncing that correctly. I assume it's not Harjit. <laughs> Harjit admires duty, but does not always care for the ministry. It's hard to say what impression the badge makes on him. Eh, good enough. Oh, now that's a sharp-dressed man if I've ever seen one. The streets outside Mrs. Chapman's are not easy. Thanks to my family history, I know where to find the immigrant neighborhoods of London. 
If you can call them immigrants. Uh, considering, you could say that we're... Well, considering the move, it's hard to say who's an immigrant and who's a native. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Tenter Ground Synagogue. An old synagogue, and one that has weathered the fall very well. But whenever I fi need to find more of them, it's Harjit who helps me. Uh, uh what, what accent to give him? I, I have something for you, if you want it. He produces a nearly new Admiral's hat, in perfectly good condition, yet I don't expect you to be able to pull off a, go a perfect or even good hin uh, India, uh, Hindu accent, but... Hindu accent? Or, e or if I do manage to do a decent job, don't expect me to actually be able to c maintain it, but I'll do my best. He produces a nearly new Admiral's hat, in perfectly good condition. Oh, I found it... I found it near the dock. No sign of the owner, and I can't w and I can't wear it myself. I thought someone at Mrs. Chapman's might get a get use out of it. Perhaps Lady Griselda. Trimmed with gold braid, it makes a person look like a, s a respectable re representative of the navy. Wearing it gives me a commanding, if slightly curmudgeon-y presence. Clothes make an impression on other people when I wear them. No shit. They make an impression on me too. Sometimes I'm inspired to say things I wouldn't otherwise. I have the feeling this particular hat would make me a bit gruff and commanding. <laughs> Put the hat on my head and consider what to say. Mutter ungraciously influenced by the hat. <laughs> that thought just sounds funny. I hope the Admiral wasn't in afflicted with life. Leave it in a cupboard for two weeks if it concerns you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Alright. Explain that I'm working for the Ministry on the Census. Establish my authority with the Census. <laughs> uh, I require assistance with the Ministry Census. The truth is essential. I see. London was determined to collect everyone's name, even before the fall. Agree, it's a peculiarity of the English. <laughs> it is a peculiarity of the English. <laughs> you weren't the only ones to ever count your citizens. What do you wish to know? Threaten him for- what? <laughs> Simply ask about Harjit Talapol. <laughs> Do you, do you live alone? At one time, I shared my lodgings. That was prior to the fall. But, uh, but my former companion is missing. <laughs> Ask for permission of authority about his romantic connections. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm a position of authority on romantic connections, I guess. Are you married, or otherwise connected? This is not a matter I would explain to most people. You and I have known each other, uh, one another for some time, however. I think you would hear me out kindly, but if you would rather not carry my secrets... Hmm. I'm sure that Arjit, I would keep his confidence, whatever it is. Uh... Hmm... Tempted to decline, let the ministry learn too much. I'm sure I can just not tell them. I believe I know what is expected in these situations. Even before the fall, I would not have married. My companion was not a lady. He was an officer who came to the Punjab. We became acquaint acquainted. Then more than acquainted. I thought he and I would remain together throughout our lives. I followed him here, away from my own country and everything I knew, to the home of my former enemy. He promised me that it was worth the sacrifice. He said we would never be separated. <laughs> you will observe that he isn't here. Indeed. Laugh at him! Fucking... That would be a bit gauche. 
change the subject with a bit of truly morbid humor. I see. I wait two beats. Then I tell one about the drowny father. For a moment, no one speaks. I look for Lucian ev everywhere I go. Um, I've heard worse, th worse things lately. Distract him with a joke. I nod sympathetically. I allow an appropriate interval to pass. Then I tell one about the fanged hat. Hajit holds out a tiny photograph. The sort that might be given to a mother or sweetheart when a man goes to work. The sitter has tremendous sideburns and mustaches both luxuriant and curly, definite brows, a broad forehead of the kind usually associated with intellect, and a sensitivity around the eyes, suggesting someone at once dashing and prone to long consideration. Have nothing to do with it. Oh, tell him truthfully that I recognize the photo. That's interesting. I've seen him. Sometime... I don't remember where. I saw him in the sunlight, though. So it must have been before the fall. If you remember anything more, or if you see him, please tell me. Help Harjit uh, find his lost beloved. It would be a bit gauche to flirt with him, in, uh, in light of the earlier thing. Let's see. Ask what do you think to London. It stinks, and I hate it. We've seen other cities. What do you think of ours? It has been taken by surprise, which serves it right. Right. No, you deserve a better answer. I do not like the city London was, and I do not like the city London will become. In time, she'll remember her confidence and try to rule again, unless Lady Griselda and her type fail. But the cracked and lost parts of London now, this is a place to love. People have no choice but to meet as equals, now and then. Take a darkly sympathetic view of matters. Perhaps you'll be in luck, and London will never recover. The East India Company may be gone, but the Masters are in the bazaar, and the Queen in her palace. London will remember what she was. <laughs> if you're afraid of- if, if you're afraid of London, well... If you're afraid of London remembering what it was, you're- you're wrong. London never really will recover. Worse things will take its place. I should go, but you know where to find me. I am always here. It's time to go home. Such as it is. Go straight to the table with the ridiculous hat on. Uh. Oh, it's not a truly ridiculous hat. Chris is waiting for me. Whatever census forms you have ready, it's time to take them to Mr. Pages. Ask if we couldn't have supper instead. Now, I'm famished. Mr. Pages has been expecting these all day. He is eager to see what you've made of the collection. Once I've shown you how to reach the ministry, you can come back on your own and turn in others. Riz has, uh, has me gather my papers. With luck, Mr. Pages will decide to keep you on. With that, she leads me outside and down a side street that is no longer named. We tack through the city like a sailboat beating up wind. We never go straight at the bazaar. More often than not, it's hidden by some intervening roof, alternating starboard and port. But every time I look up, it stands closer. An entire city warped around its foul present. What a monstrous edifice. Truly disgusting creation. Finally, we find ourselves standing in its shadow, under its walls. Disgusting and cowardly at that. There are, few, there are creatures more pathetic, but they are few and far between. At least down here. Out there. Well, they are as common as the stars in the sky. Ex almost exactly as common, in fact. Before us is a low door that once, I think, belonged to a solicitor's office. Grizz takes out a key. 
made of something other than metal and unlocks that door. Mind the pile of papers. I've already sorted them three times. Mr. Pages is very particular about the ordering of documents. Now, where has he gone? Usually he's here by this time of day. Ah, there you are, sir. We were just coming to bring you the census documents. A first installment of many, I'm sure. There is a tone in her voice, somewhere between fondness and a nanny guiding an untutored child. Ignore the room between them. Don't. <laughs> I watch her curiously. She doesn't meet my eye. Does she have feelings towards it? Affection? Regard for a very strange and demanding pet? Or something? More, or is it something more heartfelt? Uh, Mr. Pages. Of all the masters of the, of the bazaar, he's probably the most fondly thought of by the player base, and and by fun and certainly the most romantically well thought of. Eh, barring perhaps Mr. Hart's, which is odd if you think about it, because Mr. Pages is one of the worst of them. Certainly the most actively evil. Barring a couple others who are just straight up cartoonishly bad. <laughs> uh, Mr. Pages, may I present Kiddo? Kiddo, this is Mr. Pages. The whole Ministry of Accounting and Recounting is under Mr. Pages' direction. Stand well back and make no sudden moves. <laughs> Mr. Pages is extremely tall, and its arms are very long. <laughs> uh, what voice should I give him? Um, I don't know. He stri it strikes me as someone would ha who would have a more somewhat of a high-pitched, na uh, somewhat nearly voice. Gri uh, Grizz, reassure your intimidation, intimidation underclerk. Mr. Pages has a surprisingly high voice for someone so large. Yeah. Thanks. So uh, you're completely safe here, kiddo. Am I? Surely you've met a very tall gentleman before. Yes, I have. I am a, very, a rather tall gentleman. I don't meet many. I haven't met, met many vile tyrants before. Not none, but not very many. Nor have I met many true, truly monstrous people. What have what have you brought us? Uh, yeah, been a census page about Grizz. <laughs> ah, most interrig uh, intertrigant. It gives me a shiny penny for my trouble. Wow, thanks, incredible. It's newly minted and has a portrait on the back of someone who is certainly not the queen. The face on the back of the coin stares at me until the hair pulls on my neck. It reminds me of a debt owed. And I don't want to remember. My breath hitches and slows and resumes. What is this? A fucking... Uh... What was the... What was the term? Ah, uh, yes. A, what is it? A justificand coin? That's an odd thing to pay people in. Provide pages with seven census form. Pages turns the papers over carefully. There's nothing interesting there. in there, I promise. It's all exactly as I told you before. Expecticated. What else is there? Uh, yeah. Pages takes my penny payment from a jar, bringing my stash to two. There are other coins in there, and a few things that aren't even coins. Buttons, pearls, probably false. A horse head, carved from ivory or bone. I don't know what the buttons are. The pearls are probably either moon pearls or, uh... Drowny pearls.
or oniric pearl, uh, oniric pearls, maybe, but that's less likely. A ho the horse head, that's probably a horse city amulet. We are, we are grateful for your assistance. There are never too many papers. We did not expect much from Archie. Under Khan Grizz, having already revelated that he is a lightless character. Do you have anything more? A lightless... Now that's an interesting turn of phrase. Have... Have you been spying on him? Has it... Have you been... Does that... Does that mean that... Are, are you implying that he's a... That he's a revolutionary, specifically a liberation of the night type? Or are you... Or are you implying he's a Bazarine? Hmm... If it's the former... Then... Gr uh... Then Grizz informing on him. Well, that greatly lowers my opinion of her. But it remains to be seen. Do you have anything more? Right. Mr. Pages takes the census page eagerly and spends some time scanning it. Whatever it finds, it considers impressive enough to offer us two pennies. But it is, I think, disappointed all the same. There is something it is looking for that it cannot find. Good. Can we say that the story is finished, or the lover has not returned? Another chaptering is imaginable. The business of the census is done for now. Perhaps I've earned a question. Ah, uh, he's looking he's looking for stories of love. As part of the bizarre's pathetic quest. Perhaps I've earned a question. Ask why maps need to be outlawed. They don't need to be. Why aren't we allowed to have maps and atlases anymore? We need them more than ever. London is in the range where it used to be. Ah, I believe the Ministry intends to resurvey the territory. In the meantime, it wouldn't do, you know, to have people using fallacious maps. That is the uh, incredibly fallacious reasoning. That doesn't even begin to make sense. <laughs> That's just complete nonsense. That's like one of those things where like the, the one of those like incredibly blatant cover-ups the government would do on like stuff that isn't even conspiracy theories because it's just obviously true. Like say, Epstein. <laughs> the territory of the NAMP is anti positificated towards lying still. Ask what that was supposed to mean. <laughs> like, I beg your pardon? I... I suppose it must be a reference to the seismic activity. Perhaps there's a concern that further events will disturb the arrangement of London streets. Riz, honey, shut the fuck up. I wasn't talking to you. Quit fucking butting in to fucking lick his boots. I'm not interested in your speculation. I'm interested in answers. And now, uh, and now I think on it, in those circumstances, the existence of inaccurate maps might cause alarm. Perhaps better not to create, in, uh, not to create in the population of an, ex in the population, an expectation of consistent layout. Really, you don't think they're already plenty alarmed? I doubt <laughs> they'll be exactly. Ah, but nonsense. That is enough of my official duties for the moment. Grizz accompanies me out again when it's time to go. She makes a couple of remarks about how useful this will be, though she stops short of asking whether I'm in debt to Horatia. Also, this whole census thing is just blatantly overstepping. Censuses are just supposed to be, like... Uh, censuses, at best, should just be, you know, finding out, finding the names of people and how many people there are and all that. Even using it to figure out demographics of people is a over, uh, massive overstep. Using it to figure out who, whether or not people are in love and the details on that, that is incredibly disturbing. Uh, let's see, let's just start with whether I must 
I don't have anything whether I'm in debt to this yet. I haven't forgotten though. Hey Horatio, half my back rent. I have to make our way back to Horatio's. Frida's asks me what I think of Mr. Pages. I think... No, yes. She tries to make it sound like an idly curious question. Make light of Pages' tailoring challenges. Uh, I tell her that I feel Mr. Pages must be a boon to robe makers throughout London. She replies that, judging by the ink stains, she does not think he replaces his wardrobe terribly often. <laughs> The rest of the walk is taken up with speculation about Mr. Page's taste in gloves and boots. Before we go back inside the house, she reminds me. We have many more people in the neighborhood to survey for the census. You know how it's done now. You can collect them and take them to Mr. Page's yourself. I have other duties, and I may not always be there, but M Page's is... Well, I am certain you won't be harmed if you visit the ministry on your own. Ask neutrally whether Grizz has feelings for Pages. I got the impression that you have an affection for Mr. Pages. One cannot say. That's as good as... <laughs> uh, that's as good as ever. Sooner Grizz recovers from this, the better. Yeah. Uh, probably. An affection for the Masters is like having an affection for... Well, never mind. This <laughs> Archie finds me upstairs after dinner. I cannot stop thinking on the Ministry of Cartography. There's something not right there. No shit. They let me show you what I'm thinking of. Agree, Mr. Pages is unsettling. Mr. Pages is not a comforting companion. He looms. It's near his height that worries me. I wasn't referring to his height. Oh, not in the main. Though it's a sign of being a bit pe peculiar. But he does worry me. That's why I wanted to show you this. It's a way of sorting out my thoughts. When I started, it was to think through a treatment. But it's good for all sorts. Stories, schemes, things that might be true, or things that don't have to be. <clears throat> While he's talking, he's getting out some bits of paper, written over his, in his own handwriting. Watch closely. Welcome to story crafting. From time to time, you'll be making stories about things you discover in the Nair. Okay then. Sometimes other people will ask you to bring them a story. They might want a true account, or they might want fiction. Either way, they'll come here to create the story they want. Interesting. This is a slot. Slots contain the elements of your story. This is a who slot, meaning it can contain a character featured in the story. Alright, these are all the character tokens you can currently put in the slot. As you meet more characters in the game, you'll gain more options. Next one of the tokens. Um... Uh, Mr. Pages, maybe? This is a story about Mr. Pages. This is a story about a man named Stanley. Oh, I should play that game. Uh, sometime on my channel. <laughs> uh, the, uh, not the, uh, modern one. The original mod. I, I quite liked the original mod for various reasons. I didn't like some of the changes they made. Anyways. You can select the slot. I'm, of course, referring to the Stanley Parable, obviously. For those who might not recognize it. It's like that again. Characters in the stories you craft here can be driven by motives. And these motives spur them to act. Tokens for actions and motives are represented by fragments of text rather than pictures. Naturally. Assign a token. Yeah. Hope for love, power, wealth, had an had unknown purpose. This is probably true. My secret unknown motives. Had a public effect, secret of it. Employed in plotting. Engaged by those around it in nefarious scheme. That's true. Uh, not every story is a single hander, of course. Commonly, a second character will feature as a friend, an enemy, or a victim. Alright. Needs to be different from the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Let's say grids. Nice two tokens can't be placed together because they don't make sense together. More often, makes a match. Yeah. Okay. Motive. Bruce was afraid of Mr. Pages. Hmm. Sometimes we'll be asked for a story where certain elements can't be changed. In that case, the slots will be locked. Change everything else about the story, but not that piece. Afraid. Possibly. Sometimes put an unknown into a slot. That means you think there's another possible answer, but you need to explore the world more to find out what it is. Building a story with some unknown elements gives you a hypothesis you can ask other characters about. Right? Hmm. Took unknown actions. Am I doing something that has something to identify? Question of fear. You formed a theory to ask people about. When you get a message about a story completed, that lets you know what kind of story you built. You can now go and ask the other characters about your idea. When you don't have any story, finish or not, you can leave the story. Yeah. Alright, that's an interesting mechanic. I have a friend below that can take what we learn and put it about in the papers. I told them I know someone that might be able to bring back a few secrets of the ministry. Clarify whether he wants me to die on my own neighbor for him. You, know, you want to pay me to bring back information about my employer, or my other employer. I can share the funds I, in the spirit of shared enterprise. Here, you have a try. Make me a tailor Mr. Pages to the papers, eh? Why not? Okay. Evade mapping. New Nair change. Mr. Pages made laws forbidding mapping, because it made, knew that the floor of the Nath would shift anyhow. That's when we come obsolete. Uh, possibly true. I mean, it's uh, it's partly true. In desire to confuse London and keep its occupants placid, Mr. Pages made laws forbidding mapping. Also true. Almost certainly. Uh, protected London. Determined to preserve London. And... No. Damn it! No! Fuck! I didn't mean to do that! <laughs> Damn it. Shit. Um, um... Yep. Here we go. Okay. I thought that was like... <laughs> there we go. The typical Londoner rebelled against these commands whenever it was safe to do so, feeling that Mr. Pages did not mean the city well. It seemed best to create a bit of difficulty for these newcomers, who acted as lords and ministers without any right. Indeed. All right. Hey, well done. Whatever Mr. Pages is doing, I did not think it's. Uh, I did not think it's for our own good. It's a tale we could spread to others, stir London up a bit, put them on their guard. I could take it to the press. I might wonder what is the purpose of having a scrap of paper just to say what you don't know. But I use that to mark a question I want to ask. Here, what would you do if you wanted to interrogate someone about why Mr. Pages was up his way to his way? Okay, this is a good, like, in-game tutorial. So why did they have to fucking have the really blatant tutorialization? This would have worked perfectly fine if they just hadn't had that earlier part. <laughs> Come on. Alright, um... Let's see. An unknown purpose. Pages. Unknowable. No. Not unknowable. Unknown. And there is all the difference in the world between those two things. Ah. A fine question about what, what Mr. Pages intends for us all. Make a question like that, and you'll be asking folk why Mr. Pages outlawed maps. Same as I asked Grizz yesterday. He got the way of it. Question to any uh, questions to ask anyone who will apply. Answers to bring to me. If you don't mind giving Mr. Pages all manner of stories about the people that live below, then you can go on with it. But if you'd rather another way to make your bread, you might investigate while you were there. Ask him questions. Ask other people questions about him. Find out a thing or two. If you make up the questions you want to ask, you can investigate with anyone you might answer. Earn your pennies at helping the citizens rather than those creatures in their blankets. 
I that sounds like a good choice, and that also sounds like a really a good, as I said, really a really good intuitive tutorial that really didn't need that that. <laughs> the one, but yeah. I was to join Archie in a search for truth. Sounds like it doesn't require upright penmanship. That makes it superior to census work right there. Don't it just? And the truth has its own va and the truth has its own value. Sorry for briefly imitating your accent there. <laughs> I'm glad to hear you say so. It's no easy thing fighting the doubts on my own. With Horatia telling me I have the fidgets and Grizz saying I should be quiet and trust our robe wearing masters. Yeah, I should let you get your sleep. But yeah, as long as as lies have their utility, truth will always have its value. You should feel free to come and talk with me anytime. My own room's not big enough to turn about in, of course, if you know what I mean. But you can find me in the parlor. <laughs> Make it insultingly clear I'm not interested even in friendship. Yeah, except for playing to uh, romance, Archie. I don't, uh, I don't know. It might be entertaining to try to fit in yours. You say that. We might as well play act of being eels in a jar. <laughs> don't threaten me with a good time, Archie boy. When I came here, there is here had a little more than a cupboard for you for new lodges. But you've got more or less your own palace. Alright. View the day in my journal. Alright, so about five pennies given to Horatia. Craft a story about what's really going on. Tell her she has something to show him. Five pages with seven census forms. And help Harjit find his lost beloved. Alright. Uh, start crafting ideas to scare it. Circumstance, motive. Circumstance, free fall. Motive, sought lost beloved. Desire. Circumstance is new. Motive was intimidated. Motive was uh, hoarded written word. Motive new nath changed. Alright. Twelve days remain in the season of confession. Alright, this seems like... Headlines today... Hang on. This seems like a good place to stop. Let's say... 39 minutes ago? What? Okay, I guess it's not a good place to stop. Theological concerns within the Anglican Communion prop formation of new synod. I thought the, uh... <laughs> I think the scrolling thing was all... Ah, there it is. That's the saving thing. Alright, this seems like a good place to stop for today. Ah. Sigils? What the fuck are sigils? Hang on. Oh. Ah, yes, the perilous descent without cessation. The, the correspondent sigils. The sigil can be interpreted as the cessation of flight on, in freefall or the world burned on its axis. You recall the full London. All right, do you, yeah. <laughs> you recall the whole of London. Do you recall how they came to that place and they sang of their lightnings and shakeful disgrace and we tilted our veins and ennobled our spires. They welcomed us then and commingled all choirs. So yeah, that was Mask of the Rose. It is what it is. And what it is, is pretty good. It's uh, it's very much sort of... It's a, it's a very natural step for... Yeah. They've uh, One of the difficulties that Fail Better Games has had over the years is... Enmeshing the gameplay and story. They do this... They do a... They do a... Good job of making the... Uh, uh, they do... They sometimes do a good job of like... Where they... You know, it's like, you know... Having the story and gameplay feed into each other, really feel like natural extensions of each other. Uh, like Sunless Sea is a good example, because like it does some, uh, it does in parts, it does a good job of this, but 
uh, sometimes it can feel like one only is only a, one or the other is a burden on the other. Uh, and it can, and a lot of them can feel very soft and start. This, well, I haven't played it very long. Uh, you know, I, mean, I still have to. Uh, I reserve judgment. I should probably reserve judgment until later, but so far, it really feels like the gameplay elements and stories feed into each other quite well. The whole build a story thing is a pretty close, uh, a pretty neat concept, but it remains to be seen whether or not the the game will actually make good use of what it has, and that is something we. Uh, but that is something we will learn in the future. Until then, I have been Joe Bob, and I'm very peeved. So long, delicious suckers.